is a matter of depending on what you're dealing with. So for limbs, tourniquets are first. Tourniquets will at least slow bleeding, if not stop it outright which will then allow you to treat somebody without having to worry about blood loss as you're bandaging. For extremities, you wrap. For center torso, you pack. You cannot use tourniquets on your center torso, which is why you pack them. So if you have packing bandages, never use those on limbs. They're not helpful there. They're only helpful in your, cat in your cavitaceous spaces, which is your center torso. Like, all the space that's inside here, you have a whole lot of, like, organs that are essentially empty unless there is material in them at that time. Small intestines, large intestines, stomach, lungs. These are all things that are essentially empty, but can expand and contract whether or not there is matter inside of them. Whether that matter is a gas, solid, or a liquid, does not matter. But because you have to fill that space to stop blood from leaving the body. That's why you have to pack those spaces. So packing bandages always go on your center torso and in no other place. You use field dressings, wraps, quick clot on limbs. You do not want to use quick clot on your torso for a multitude of reasons, mostly because it's a chemical burn and then they're going to have to cut that shit away later. In-game, matters less. Real life, different story. But the primary point is stop the bleeding. Or pack the torso for the bullet wounds. Once you've got bleeding under control, if they're not breathing, that's when you start worrying about those things. Uh, you're also making sure that their heart's still beating because if somebody ha doesn't have a pulse, they won't live anyway. You've got roughly five minutes of oxygen before you're fucked and you're, like, brain dead. You might still live, but at that point you're starting to lose brain cells and neurological function, so it matters. Uh, to that end, CPR is the next step. If their heart isn't going, you would be doing CPR to make sure that their heart is pumping do not worry about doing breathing uh, this is a thing that is like starting to get pushed more and more in like the CPR training that they give to civilians regularly rescue breaths are not as important as just doing compressions compressions especially for people who do not have training to like do breaths or the equipment to do those things without like putting yourself at risk to transmission vectors, like if the person has AIDS, if they're about to throw the fuck up, if they're about to, like, have some sort of disease that you could catch, COVID being one of them. You don't want to give rescue breaths to somebody who has COVID, you'll get COVID. You're, you're essentially putting mouth to mouth, like that's not going to fly. Just about every state in the union has some level of protection allowing uh, good Samaritans to not have to do things if they don't either don't have the equipment or do not have the uh, resources to do it safely, which is why compressions is the most helpful thing you can do, because if you're doing compressions, you'll save that person's life by making sure that the oxygen still in their system is still really pumped throughout their body through their heart, which you are now manually stimulating. Uh, things that help fix heart rates you're going for epinephrine that will jump heart rate up it'll increase like movement it might jump start the heart but if you need to do cpr like give them epinephrine first and then start doing compressions next because you want the, the added help of the epinephrine getting the blood through the heart when they wake up if somebody has already lost a lot of blood and their pulse is weak, you will need to give them epinephrine, period, and worry about giving morphine after they've got blood back in their system. You can be in pain all they want all goddamn day. If you give them morphine and they don't have enough blood, you'll kill them. You can That's see a good thing to like know. Pretty, 
you can have a pretty accurate depiction of this if you watch Saving Private Ryan, where in which the only medic with their team, spoilers, gets shot and tells them to just give him morphine because it's going to slow his heart rate down and he's not going to bleed to death. He'll just die because his heart's going to stop. But he won't feel any of it. So, the important thing to know, if you're giving somebody medical treatment, morphine can wait, epinephrine can't. If it's a choice, you're always going to give morphine after. Clear? Gotcha. Yeah. So, if you are both in pain, losing blood, and you're like in a bad situation what do you do first stop the bleeding attack the targets attacking you correct answer Thalen yeah that if one's possible, if possible engage whatever is fighting you because they're not going to stop engaging you while you bandage yourself we've probably all done the AI at least once or twice when they start bandaging themselves by kneeling out in the open I love it when they do that. Don't be, don't be that guy. Fucking let them be that guy and smoke them, but do not be that guy. To that end, finish your engagement if at all possible, then start fixing yourself. Attend to your own wounds before you attend to the wounds of others, especially if you're the medic. It is always the medic's job to deal with the injuries of others. If you are the medic, attend to your own injuries first on the basis of if you die, they won't have a medic. If they don't have a medic, that's just, that's just more people who will end up dead because nobody else there can give blood. Nobody else can do the advanced medical stuff that medics can do. Uh, let's talk about blood loss and what it means. Um, I think we've all at some point or another seen in the upper right hand corner the drop of blood that's up in that screen. It designates how much blood you've lost to a point where you can sort of measure it. A little bit isn't awful. Half? That's bad. Your stamina is going to be significantly cut. Your ability to fight is going to go down. You'll be tired faster. You'll drain stamina faster. Just not a good time get blood in you as soon as you possibly can. Common sense. Uh, three quarters, like, get yourself to medical attention so that you can have blood put in you as quickly as you can. If you are, like, zero blood drop, uh, how are you awake? <laughs> I've actually uh, run into that once while still fighting. That was interesting. You, you have lost enough blood at that point that you will not remain awake if you are awake because your blood pressure is just about to plummet all the way off and yeah. you're about to hit cardiac arrest. You can try and augment that through epinephrine. It probably won't last for very long. Uh, to that end, you can still bring somebody back from that level of blood loss. As a medic... If you can get to the person and they're not bleeding out of every part of their body and you push them blood immediately, you can still save that person's life. So first thing you would do, address this person and assess them. If they have major injuries on either arms or legs, tourniquet first, push blood. If they have a wound in their center torso and they're and it says they've lost a fatal amount of blood. Push blood first, then start packing the torso. Uh, part of trauma, which I don't understand in Arma if they actually like do anything with this or not, is that when you are in a situation where your body has experienced serious trauma, that trauma will be reflected by uh, blood flow being restricted from your limbs to pool into your center torso this is another reason why we pack the center torso because you will start losing blood through there if you have more trauma to your center torso you need to stop the places where that blood is leaving your body because 
it's even less blood that will make it out to your limbs. This is why your hands will start shaking more. This is why you will start losing motor control of your legs and you won't be able to, like, stand or kneel. It's reasons why you'll pass the fuck out. Um, but when you've got somebody who's in that situation, like, the most important thing is push blood first, at least in game. Push blood first, then start packing their torso. If you have somebody who can assist you, they need to be packing the torso and you need to be pushing blood and then address everything else like just get them enough blood that they will like maybe come back to life depending on how long they've been in that condition they might be dead no matter what you do but you still have to try to that end blood torso if limbs tourniquets that yeah. blood. Any questions? Oh, that was a good refresher. Indeed. I basically covered all the stuff that I had forgotten since actually doing a medic role like three years ago. And yeah, I don't. I, I actually it's... don't think I knew the uh, morphine will kill you if you don't have enough blood. Oh yeah, always morphine It'll... last, basically. Morph. Pain is the thing that you can live with pretty much no matter what blood is not yeah even even if the situation is essentially like you have to sit on the chest of the person you're administering medical help to because they are trying to fight you because they are in so much pain they can live through that they might pass out because of it because the human brain does stuff like that but they will live So is it, that is a good refresher tale. Cool. Glad that that, that was helpful. All right. Do you want to trade places for this part? Yeah, I'll trade places. Oh. Uh, do you want us to have rangefinders or anything for calling uh, our distance? Uh, we're or... going to do the lecture part first. So I actually put it in the uh, team speak on the leadership channel. If you feel like opening those documents, we'll go over the call for fire guy first. Okay. Welcome, everyone. My name is Thalen, and I'll be your sh instructor today. Are you on shouting? <laughs> uh, no. You should be on shouting. I, was just I forgot to mention that earlier. Trauma PowerPoint. God. Um, yeah. I tried to cut as much FNAF free out of it as possible. All right, so today we're talking about the call for fire. Basically, what's the call for fire for? It's for you to get someone to blow up some shit in your way. That's the, the best way to describe it. It is a specific protocol for actually, like, getting the information to your fire support unit in a concise, clean way, and so they don't accidentally drop around on your head or something awful like that. So, first part of the document, the fire support system is going to talk about the three major elements, which is the forward observer. They're the person who looks at the target and calls someone to get it blown up. The fire direction center is basically they take the information from the forward observer, translate it so that the guns or the firing unit can blow it the fuck up. Um, for us, we'll probably be doing a condensed mortar section. Basically, three guys with a mortar, and they'll pop off some targets if there's an infantry or a light armored vehicle in your sources or get engaged by them. Uh, you know. Stuff like that. Um, Damon, you ready for some group reading? Oh, God. Do you have the document open? Uh, so you said in the leadership? Yeah, I posted it in the leadership channel for Arma. Good thing I can access that because I'm a fancy boy. Yeah, exactly. That's why I put it there because no one else decided to show the fuck up. Then it's The guide's technically not done yet, which is why it's not on the CML words on my end. One sec. Uh, both or just one of them? Uh, the first one, the CML uh, call for fire guide. The second one's just kind of like a attachment for stuff we'll cover later when I actually teach you guys how to do forward observation. Fire support has three main components. Stop. Hold on. 
scroll down to where uh, you see the bold text Thai chili. Chili? Oh. Thai chili, yeah. The... Uh, you guys, <laughs> if you guys want to actually... What? They're the flavor of almonds I had on hand when I was writing this. Oh, the, <laughs> the flavor of almonds. <laughs> yeah. The um, world shall now forever know that you label things Thai through flavor of chili. almonds. Um, so you'll see in this whole thing, um, that example, that's an example of a complete call for fire, essentially. Um, so it's, we'll, uh, do you guys actually want to have that read out loud or do you want me to skip to breaking it down? I mean, I'm just reading through it right now. Okay. I'm sure yeah, that once it's finished, it'll get posted one. and pinned. Yeah. And you'll see, like, they talk about the grid, enemy targets, and stuff like that. And then there'll be, like, a message to observer and stuff like that. And then, uh, once you guys are done reading with that, join me at the little table that has transmission and elements as the columns. Let me know when you're there. Tell, I'm assuming you're already there because you've read this before. Bloody? Yes. Huh. Yes. I'm I'm still here. I just okay. myself so I'm not breathing over. Fair here. enough. We're just waiting for da Damon to catch up since you already read it before. Yeah, at the, just at the first trans, uh, just at the transmission elements, right? But yeah, the actual uh, table where it talks about first, second, and third. Yeah, I'm, I'm at that. You're there. Okay, so let's break it down. So in that example, you guys, you saw observer ID and warning order. Basically, this is this first part of the call for fire is let's say like you're talking to other people or c command or something like that. This is basically the warning order. Well, let me start with the observer ID. Your fire support unit might be helping out a different platoon or something like that. So let's say you're part of Wasabi squad and the other team is jelly bean squad or something ridiculous, whatever. Let's, let's go with chaos. Yeah, chaos. All right, chaos and Wasabi. Um, when you give your observer ID, now the artillery knows which unit's helping. You know, it's not always going to be a one-to-one -one relationship. It might be one firing unit helping out three squads or something like that. Uh, the warning order basically tells them, hey, I got fucking fire mission incoming. You need to tell everyone else to shut the fuck up. It basically lets them all shut up so you can send your transmission without being interrupted. So pretty much just clear comms, but... For that specifically yeah, without saying that because like that means like hey fire mission inbound on the net um and then there's two uh there's a couple of small parts of that uh which you'll see if you scroll down a little bit there's uh adjust fire and fire for effect adjust fire is your forward observer couldn't get a clear line of sight on the target for whatever reason or bad spotting or something like that and they need to actually as we might affectionately call it, Kentucky windage it into the target, uh, essentially bracketing it. Like, okay, this round was 50 meters too far. You got to drop it back 50 meters closer to us or left, right, all that stuff. Uh, fire for effect means, hey, here's a good target, or you're, let's say you're using a laser designator for some laser guided rounds. Just drop three rounds on the designator kind of thing. Yeah. Um, then you'll see... There's two ways to essentially spot in Arma. Grid reference, where you give them a grid, and what's called polar. Um, basically, that means um, the direction that you're facing, essentially your azimuth, um, and the elevation difference between you and the target. I'm not going to go into how that's calculated into it right now, but that's what you would give if you were going for a polar mission. So... Let's say, Damon, you're observing a target, but you don't have a micro dagger or GPS. You have binoculars and maybe a range. 
or a rangefinder, so you would be like, Damon, uh, Phelan, this is Damon, uh, adjust fire, polar over. I would say back to you. And that tells me, hey, I have to do some math because you're not going to give me a grid reference where I can just drop rounds on it. And I'm going to be doing one round at a time to bracket it in until I can drop a bunch of rounds on the actual target itself. Yeah. Any questions? Uh, not as of yet, I think. Okay. I know, this is a lot of information, and I am condensing it as much as possible. This is a complicated process, to be clear. So. Also, one thing to note. Once a fire mission started, like, let's say, uh, you're like, Damon, uh, Thalen, this is Damon, fire mission over, and I say it back to you, you guys don't need to use call signs, because you should be the, the only the firing unit and the observer giving the fire mission are the only people talking. You know? Just a little note, so this way you don't have to keep saying, oh, I, Striker 3-1, this is Titan 6-6, six, six, or something like that, you know? Um, the second Which would part, be the normal way. Which would be the normal way. But for fire missions, you want that, you want rounds on target as fast as possible, so that's one of the where few instances the military's like, all right, drop that shit. We got shit to do. Um, the second transmission part, where you would actually, like, let go of the mic, essentially, is when you're doing your locate, the target location, either with a grid reference, and then they read it back to you, or with a polar, which would be, like, direction, uh, uh, no, I wrote that down wrong, I need to fix that. Direction... 0134 if you're using those are 136 degrees if you're using degrees um, you give them the direction distance and the elevation for polar so let's say if you guys want to pull out your compasses and I want to blow up this air control tower you know uh, right here so if we all pull out our range finders How are we supposed to find elevation? Um, these ranger finders don't have it. But assuming flat terrain, you know, because it's a fucking parking lot, you know, your micro dagger can give you a, a rough idea, or you can open oh. up your map and look at it. Yeah, so, so for right now, it'd be like plus 18, whatever MSL stands for. Where are you seeing that? Do we have On the micro dagger. Oh, micro dagger. Uh, yeah, I picked no. one up. That, that's your elevation off of sea level. If it elevation is important, if there's a difference between the two. So let's say you're on a hill and the enemy target's in a valley or something like that. That's gonna affect your distance from mm. seeing the target because technically it's longer or shorter or whatever. So in this instance, if it was polar, I would say direction two four seven. Distance eight six meters. You know, because that's how far away it is from me. Yeah. To be clear, we're still inside the uh, casualty area slash danger close zone of where yeah. that would be yeah, getting don't, dropped. The effective range of a 105 millimeter howitzer round, which is uh, a smaller round, is 30 meters. Oh boy. And uh, the acceptable tolerance for. Uh, <laughs> hitting the round within the target to kill it is 30 meters so if you're within 60 meters of a target it could land and hit both you guys <laughs> yep so this is why you want to typically do it at least like 300 400 meters away but that would still be considered danger close any questions about polar forward observing I just want to say it back to you to make sure that I'm clear sure. on it. So, I would say, uh, Thalen, this is tail, fire mission, direction, 247, distance, 86 meters. Okay, so, not quite. Um, basically, the way it would work is you want to actually break up that first part and that second part. So, okay. you'd be like, tail, uh, Thalen, this is tail, fire for feck over. And I would go, Th uh, tail, this is Thalen, fire for feck out. 
transmission's technically over. Then, uh, or you would say, uh, fire for effect polar to indicate that it's going to be a direction based one instead of a grid reference. Okay. You don't say it in that first part, just so this way they have time to set some stuff up, essentially, or to like to get them on the guns. Okay. Plus, other people still might be talking when you give the warning order, so you want to give it a second so everyone can shut up, and then you can be like, direction 247, distance zero, zero, uh, 86 meters, you know. Makes okay. sense. I think so. I'll probably fuck it up a couple times, though. Eh, that's what practice is for. Okay. Finally, the third part of the tr call for fire transmission set. Uh, there's three elements here. Target description, method of engagement request, or special instructions. So, real quick, five and six, method of engagement requested and method of control or special instructions are optional. You don't have to say these if you're just trying to drop some rounds on and fucking get the fuck out of there. So probably default to HE. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. that's mostly what armor does, and you probably don't want Willy Pete accidentally landing near you. That would be bad. Yeah, that would not be fun. That would be an awful fucking day. So, target description. But yeah, one thing to make clear is, aside from, like, special instructions... The artillery unit, the firing support unit, decides how many rounds it's going to throw at it. Because let's say, like, you see an infantry platoon or a patrol, like a squad, like four guys, standing near some buildings, and you're like, hey, yeah. enemy infantry in some cover, uh, like a, a squad or something like that. They're like, hmm. And they, because they, they have a map, they can look at the map and be like, hey, that's supposed to be near, like, an important target. That's probably, like, a full platoon or worse. So they might bump a round count on you. Um, so it's a request. Or let's say you do want to use Willie P. Or, because in Arma, the artillery units do have mines. Artillery de deployed mines. We can That's do mines. funky. Exactly. They'll just impact into the ground, and then when people get too close, they go boop. Exactly. Boop the snoot. So target destruction. <laughs> really simple. You got infantry, you got tanks, you got armored fighting vehicles. You know, if you can accurately describe the model, do that. If not, you can be like, enemy IFV in the open, in le light cover, in heavy car cover, or under tree cover. You tell them that, so this way they know what to give you, if that makes sense. For instance, uh, HE can be set to a proximity sensor, so that it can either hit and detonate when it hits the ground, or it can do near surface burst. Near surface burst is more helpful if there's tree cover because the round won't hit a tree limb and then explode when it's not supposed to. Right, that's what we call a point delay in the artillery circle jerk. Um, we could also do like a specific timed air burst, you know. There in armor, we're kind of limited, but in real life, there are all kinds of fucking shells that you can use. FYI, dragon's coming in soon. Oh, hey, look at that. That'll be fun. Uh, Damon, are you recording this? Yes. Cool, all right. <laughs> this will be an awkward lecture. I'm sure I'll get something wrong. Uh, then We are right, so... here to learn. Exactly. exactly. So anyway. Everyone must learn. So that basically covers four and five. Um, your target description, method of engagement, method of control, or special instructions. So, let's say you're, like, about to start an assault in, like, five minutes. Or you want to start an assault at a specific period of time, and you want to really fuck them up by dropping some artillery on your head while you advance to get closer, or something like that. Or it's a high-priority target, and you want to make sure that a round lands on it. This is how you would do that. Um, it's still a request, but generally an artillery unit will follow those special instructions if they're not fucking idiots. So examples of that are time on target, laser designation, or uh, sweep and zone, if I remember the name. I have to look that up. Uh, time on target means, hey, uh, it's five minutes till 1800. 
that's when we're going to kick off the assault. So now that gives us time to set up that fire mission so that at 1800, those rounds will hit, if that makes sense. Uh, laser designation, we have mortar shells and artillery shells that can be designated. So you can point a laser at a target and really make sure it gets fucked up. Sweeping zone is, hey, see a grid square? I want you to fuck that particular grid square so up, essentially. It, it, it takes a lot of rounds. Square? Yes, my lord. I don't want to. <laughs> Any questions, Dan? Um, not that I can think of. There'll probably okay. be some at some point, but... Yeah. So, those are the three main elements. There is a component afterwards called the MTO, or Message to Observer. And basically, th this is for the artillery unit telling the forward observer what he's getting. So let's say you wanted, hey, three rounds in effect. Um, so, like, each gun shoots three rounds. The artillery unit's like, hey, I got some extra ammo. We could probably really fuck this up if we want to. Or let's say you underestimate the threat. Like, you, if you say, I have these... And, or something like that, and the artillery knows that a shell's probably only gonna pop some tires on it, and you really want to saturate it, he might say, hey, you're gonna get four rounds in effect. Or something like that. And he'll confirm to make sure that either laser designation or any other special instructions are used. Okay. And that is the call you know, for fire. Stop, demon. I know it never will. I mean, I hope it doesn't. At least not anytime soon. Any Hey, Demon. Yes? I just want to point out to you that this is a skill that you in specific are going to need to learn because if you want to do marksman stuff... Yeah, I need to call. Marksman's job is forward observer. Yeah. I mean, we called in a successful cash strike at least once uh, yeah, back when Wookiee was... Yeah, was guiding Murdoch in by his nose. No, that that was that was, the, that was the one uh, when Tigris was cashed. Oh, well, that's because Tigris is a goblin pilot in armor. Yeah, he really is. So. I don't know anything about it. Uh, he, he was part of the old armor group. He basically wrote the guides that all the pilot training uses now. Still. He's a really good pilot. He's a really good pilot. He's a stick okay. and throttle kind of guy. So yeah. good guy. Like good if you if you if you want to learn piloting and you can find him with spare time, that's a good way to do it. Yeah, he he he's an excellent teacher. He also did my sniper course. Around. That is also so. a way to do it. A lot of practice is you know, helicopters. Okay. So for practice, uh, I'll jump in this paladin. If you guys want to, we do tell you want to teleport us over to the desert so you guys have clear observation lines. Uh, he I could can't fly us. you over to the desert because I don't have any way of actually doing that since neither of you are editable objects. <laughs> I don't oh. drag in for it. Okay. Well, he's coming. I can fly you out there. Well, easy peasy, but... I have to take this thing. I'm pretty sure a Chinook cannot carry it. I, I think I, I think I a... Uh... Or you could just spawn one, one there. Yeah. You know what? I can practice my flying. We're dead. No. Uh, everybody get on 60. Uh, yeah, I'm already on 60. I think. No, I died. I died, and then it reset it. Ooh, radio check over. I hear you. Cool. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, let's take a little bird. Fuck it. Uh, you can take a little bird. I'm going to take one of those big birds. Okay. Which d someone put a marker on the desert we're going to. Someone User put a marker on the desert channel. we're trying to get to. Hey, dragon. Are we just trying to go to Almira?
Why did, why did Tell land so far away? Uh, I mean, he is flying a Chinook. That's a bit harder. That's fair. He's just kind of sitting over there. Do we want to go over there? No, he bandaged himself. What happened? Did he land a bit too hard? I think so. Are you guys landing where I am? No. No? Do you want us to come over there? What happened? Why are you bandaging? Uh, apparently I landed too hard at six kilometers an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Deep fried, you were saying. Yes, yeah. deep fried indeed. All right. So, Dragon, could you do me a favor and mm. make me a medic? Yes. Because I don't know how to do that inside of Zeus, and it's a thing I should probably figure out sometime soon. Yeah, so what you can do, there's two ways from what I understand. Um, the first one, the easiest one, is you go under Ace Medical and then you'll be doing a sign medic. So now okay. you should have medical terms. Um, See, but I click on myself and nothing changes. Right. I did it to Thalen too. Right, nothing will change, but you should then have the appropriate... Oh, okay, I think I understand. Let's do this. Uh, I'm gonna plop down uh, a civilian. No, not a civilian. Yeah, put in a civilian. Uh, tail. I want you to shoot him and then hit fix him up. Okay. I think you killed him. Not that many times. Wait, let me help. I got guns. <laughs> oh. Like once in the leg. <gasps> There you, yeah, that's, there you go. There you go. Oh, he's bad. <laughs> he's using himself. He won't be able to fix himself fully. Uh, Did he? he blood, but he's oh, okay. I got it. That's I got fun. this. <laughs> now he's he's dead. Uh, oops. <laughs> this is fucking Mr. Caliber munitions, man. Never doubt. <laughs> okay, but did you notice if that was faster or not? Let me let me do something real quick here. Medical menu. Yep, now I'm a medic. Okay, so the way to do that is you double click on yourself or somebody, you go to skill, and okay. then at the top there'll be a drop down menu for medicine. The options are false, combat lifesaver, and doctor. I set you to doctor. Okay. And I can see that Thalen is not doctor. And demon is not doctor. 
so your uh, skill will be higher. Okay, Neat. and that works for, like engineer as well. So I'm gonna need you to like walk me through how to do that in Zeus, but not at this exact moment because we just showed up out here to do call for fire bullshit. Got it. So tell, would you mind giving me a paladin? Uh, do it, it's a trap. Be dragon's job right now. A uh, dragon, excuse me. Yeah. And uh, if you want to give him something to target and blow up, like I don't know, clomping her away or something like that. What the hell is a paladin called? Uh, M An M109 A6. Thank you, Tail. Tail and clutch. I didn't work on paladins, man. I worked on fucking shitty British light artillery guns. The world for shower. Shall forever know your opinion of British artillery. Hello, tiny child. Yeah, that's my little brother. Okay. <clears throat> okay, uh. Target was replaced in that mark. Get off my tank. I don't know what you're talking about, I'm not on your tank. Uh, demon. I see you. I wanted to see if I could stand on the barrel while he moved it. It's for science. Yeah. My scientific experiment failed. You should also probably put your plugs in. Or forever, mm -hmm. uh... I, I already have them in, which is which is good. I, real I remember last time we flew the heli and I forgot to put them in. Hey, how many of us uh, have a AT? Um, armor piercing and Sinjiri tracers. I have I have armor piercing that on my Mark That'd Eleven. So I'm gonna place a BTR eighty, <clears throat> approximately. One and one point one click. Got thermal vision. Look at that. Alright, BTR-80 is live reference map. Or spotted. Alright, spotters. Uh, I'm gonna recommend you do a grid reference, because I doubt you want to try to get me to do polar right now, and I'm not in the mood to do polar. BTR scene. Because I placed it. LOL. So, Tail, Dragon, uh, Damon, if spotted. either one of you want to start the call for fire, feel free to call me on the radio. What's your cause? Just nailing. Let's see here. What's up? What's your call sign? Uh, give me call sign, uh, striker six. Really, I have that 1,081. Roughly similar, because uh, I'm not in the same position as you. What is probably the best thing to start with first? Um... We have to establish contact, right? Say that this is just for called where, fire. Where are you on the map? You have to establish your grid. Two, three, five, one, eight, six. If you have a micro dagger, you can do pretty quickly. Or if you have a mini map. Hey, I'm gonna plop down an arsenal in the, uh, little bird. Okay. Sure thing. Um... Fuck it. 
Damon, you doing all right? Do you have any questions? Oh, I know my brain. My brain is just <laughs> dying for some reason. <laughs> You said you're striker six? Yeah. Sorry, one sec. Wasn't there a way to do this? Damn it, forget how you showed us to do this once upon a time. Striker 6, this is trainee 1. Adjust fire grid, over. Trainee 1, this is striker 6, adjust fire, out. Grid two four five one eight nine. Grid two four five one eight nine. Numpad five. Numpad five. Enemy BTR in open. Duh. Two rounds in effect at my command. Enemy BTR in the open. Two rounds at your command. Fire in three, two, one. Fire. Splash in five. What ordinance did you use? Because I just saw it from Zeus and it looked like tiny little pebbles.
Oh, I said it to HE, but it might have shot a mine cluster. Hold on. Yeah, I don't think that was HE. Looked like mines to me. Yeah, it said HE, but it might have been a mine cluster. <laughs> Uh, do you just want me to shoot it again? Striker 6, this is Hunter 1. Repeat, last fire mission. Out. Roger, repeat. Shot, over. Also, I can confirm there are anti-personnel mines scattered all across the BTR. Perfect, we get to learn mine clearing. Oh Actually, boy! Those are mines. Look like apers to me. Shape charges. Splash. Splash out. So do it. Striker to adjust? six, this is Hunter Two. Repeat last fire mission for six rounds, please. Yeah, I didn't I didn't say enough rounds initially. Roger, six rounds, firing for effect. Two infantry over there. We probably dismounted the vehicle after it got fucked up. Yeah, that would make sense. Hunter two, this is striker six. Six rounds complete. Enemy armor KIA. Roger, one enemy BTR, KIA. Alright, I'm gonna pop out and get, do a little quick after action on that. Yeah, I know that was. I know my call out was rough. Part of the learning experience, I'm not gonna yell at you. Yo's a big boy. Okay. Couple things. Um. Shit, I should have taken notes while doing that. Uh, First, don't make your wait three minutes before each part of the call out. Right. Well, that's, that's part of learning. Um, when you're doing an at your command mission, and I should have covered this, I apologize. You want to wait for the gun battery to say, guns ready. Oh, uh, okay. Because you don't know if they're actually pointing at it. I was just knowing where to look, so I was already on target. Yeah. Um, when you want to go from a just fire to fire for effect... Um, instead of saying repeat six rounds or something like that, just say fire for effect. That okay, that and then you just keep from, shooting until we say it's dead? Well, um, you also didn't give me a chance to send a message to Observer. Because <laughs> originally you asked for two rounds in effect, and then you were like, now give me six. And then give me three, you know. Yeah. So, you want to wait for the gun to read back like, hey, you know message to observer you're getting three rounds in effect or something like that yeah. and then i would give you the time of flight so this way you know when you hear the gun go off how long it's going to take until it hits the target yeah okay any questions makes sense oh is this the new trench system yes God, this whoa is so much nicer. okay a... oh you got you all right let me get back yeah. on <laughs> Striker 6 is ready for fire missions. Striker 6, this is Hunter 1. Fire mission, over. Hunter 1, this is Striker 6, fire mission. 
Enemy Russian Spetsnaz garrison inside of building. Break. Grid coordinates is as follows. Break. Two, four, six. Tack. One, eight, nine. Break. Keypad nine. How read back? Grade two four six one eight niner num uh numpad niner. Good read back. Uh, one times H E fire for effect. You only want one round for a fire for effect. All right, my bad. That's uh fire for just or just by fire. One times the round H E. Roger, stand by. mission first and then adjusting by fire but it makes more sense that the guy actually knows we're gonna adjust by fire so it does and then tail I'll pump down some more enemies and then you can have a go at him oh I think I've got my target Roger Hunter 1, this is Striker 6. Message to observer, break. Enemy Special Forces Platoon in the open. Uh, adjust fire stay on standby. Three rounds in effect. Correction. Enemy Spetsnaz garrisoned inside of building. How copy? Roger, in garrison. Good copy. Fire when you're ready. Time of flight, three zero seconds. Have full copies. Shot, over. Shot, out. Out. Thank you. Flash over. Striker six, <clears throat> splash out. Striker six, this is Hunter one. I just fire. I uh, just by fire. One hundred meters to the north. How copy? One hundred meters north. Shot over. Shot out. Shot out. <laughs> no. Splash. Oh. The striker six, this is Hunter One. Be advised, splash was a hundred meters south. Break. Roger, correcting a hundred meters north. Go the opposite way of where you just uh, adjusted to. Hot copy. Roger. Shot. Shot out. Shot. Recall your grid, Dragon. It's consistently off. Yeah. Striker 6, this is Hunter 1. 
The advised grid as is as follows, Rick. Two, four, six, tack, one, eight, nine, keypad, slash numpad, niner, break. Reference a uh, lone building on the map just southwest of some trees. Enemy Spetsnaz is garrisoned inside of that building. I'll copy off. Roger. Give me two times HE, fire for effect when ready. I'll copy. Two rounds in effect. Shot. Shot out. Shot out. Now see, wouldn't he wait to call shot until both his rounds are expended? I think that's uh, the first shot is the one that matters because you're going to see it first. Mm, right, that makes sense. Ooh! Striker 6, this is Hunter 1. Good effect on target. Go ahead and give me fire mission. Three times HE. Same grid, how copy? Roger, repeat, three rounds. Striker 6, this is Hunter 1. Good effect on target BTA. Uh, entire Spetsnaz squad destroyed. I'll copy. Roger, end of mission. Enemies, special forces team eliminated. Hey, so why don't we use an umpad or a keypad? Uh, because uh, I work with phones and I get them backwards. Also, largely, it doesn't uh... use pads like that. Okay, okay. So what's the easier way to do? Should we just actually break it down into an 8-digit grid? Because I think that's a skill that everybody could learn. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, that could the, radio. Mean, the keypad the system radio. Uh, Why are you yelling at me? Because you're coming twice, and how you uh, don't like it. Jesus. Um, I don't like your voice that much, Jesus. I do. Only Thank you, Tal. You. Um, <laughs> I mean, we could use keypads for Arma, considering the weird mapping system. Yeah. Um, I will just have to put in that in writing, but like when you say see keypads, I'm I'm looking at a phone. <laughs> Me. So, uh, a couple things. Uh, your order is all out of whack. Um, you yeah, weren't here for the first part where I actually formally broke it down and everything like that. Okay. Um, and that's gonna come with some fine tuning and stuff like that um but you know uh you say the grid in your after you're like hey hunter six this is uh striker six this is hunter two fire mission or fire for effect or just fire and then i read it back and then we and then i let go of the mic and then that's when you're gonna be like grid two four six one eight niner keypad niner and then i'll read that back to you and then you're like enemy infantry special forces in the open or in cover or because in garrison doesn't tell me anything they'd be staying staying in tents you know oh. right i thought I... that's right? my fault Tail? yeah I, I heard a no <laughs> no i think somebody else was talking okay. um and then uh we'll work on the adjust fire later i'm just working practicing the actual how do you send the transmission part today um, yeah, my only, my what only, my only, like, biggest, like, gripe with the way that it is right now is that I can't, like, how do you give, like, straight up, I want to do a one transmission with one correction, and then you're just able to fire a mission. Like, it that's, doesn't that's, work like that. I know, I know it doesn't work like that, but 
<clears throat> I will be back to do my fire mission in just a second. I have to talk to some people real quick. Sure, man. We'll be right back. Okay. Well, um, see, that's that's what I kind of want to get to because at the end of the day, especially with artillery computers, <laughs> like you give me a grid, you give me how many rounds, and then like the guy on the ground can say, hey, all right, you know what, you're off. Let me adjust you, or hey, that was good. Give me like five, ten more. You know, I want to streamline it for the purposes of Arma and not. Uh, without like making also, it. you're coming in on radio. Me? Yeah. You've been talking on radio this entire conversation. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Is that better? You should yes. also make sure you're on shouting if you would. He, he, he is, is recording it. So I mean that's yeah, something. I'm that always recording. Talk to this on. I would nice. prefer it to be a little bit more formalized, especially if like. We have two different squads or fire teams, and they both want to call in missions and stuff like that. Yeah. It keeps it cleaner. Yeah. Mostly. And a lot of the stuff, like, once you get the order down, it can go super quick. Like, uh, I mean, you guys haven't had the practice yet, so you're still, like, reading, but, like, let me just fucking, fucking do a quick read out real quick and just pretend to talk to myself. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay. Actually, uh, Damon, would you pretend to be my firing unit? I just need you to read back what I'm saying, essentially. So pretty much just repeat what you say in the next however long? Yes, you would say again. Repeat as a fire command. Mm -hmm. Don't say repeat if you don't want to repeat. Oh, Sorry, yeah. my eye of Sauron started triggering. All right. <laughs> you will be, uh, Hunter, uh, Striker 6. I will be Hunter 3. Okay. Now, we will do this over the radio. I know it's going to come over twice, but, you know, practice makes perfect. All right. Gotcha. You good? Probably. Okay. I li literally, it's going to be fairly simple. User joined your channel. Seven, four. Hello. Hey, what's going on? Hey. hey. Uh, we're doing some practice. What's up? I was about to say, how's the night been going? It's going. We're doing some practice for Call for Fires right now. Um, I will post the relevant documents in the channel. So this way you can get some reading in and we'll, we'll figure it out from there, alright? So uh, just stand by for me. I'm going to be doing a practice run real quick to, as an example. Alright. Better can we just join in anyways? Yeah, go ahead and join in. Just clear the net, please. Alright. Striker 6, this is Hunter 3. Fire for effect. Fire for effect. Out. Grid 246189er. Break. Keypad 9er. Grid 246189. Grid keypad 9. Out. Enemy infantry in cover. Three rounds in effect. Copy. Enemy. Infantry in cover, three rounds in effect. And that's it. That's literally all it is. Okay, so it's literally just establish contact, say where you want it, and then after they confirm where you want it, and what as long as it's correct, is. you just say what it is and how many shots what you, want. you want. Okay. But you don't even have to do that. You could just say enemy infantry in the open. Okay. And then they'll be like, yeah. hey, message to observer. Enemy infantry in the open, time of flight, 30 seconds, four rounds in effect. Yeah. I, I would... That back and then they just start shooting. Yeah. I would recommend putting pretty much that as well on the document. Because trying to scroll through all, all the stuff that's there is very important information, but you want a section where people can just look at it and go, okay, so just this, this, this. Yeah, that's what the table's for. That's basically what it is. Um, I will... This is like a rough draft still. Oh, yeah, um, no, that makes I sense. I will highlight that five and six are optional. And basically, what you need is steps one through four. Yeah. And that's all you need. You when you're doing an adjust fire. But even with a fire for effect, let's say I landed like 50 meters short of the target, you could be like, hey, adjust 50 meters north or whatever. Or 50 meters up. Repeat. And then they'll just shoot it again, just a little farther north. And that's all you need to do. I used to get that, yeah. I'm so used to just having a... I needed to break my old... Where is my fucking... Hello? These things? No. Wait, what? What's this stuff? Oh, bandages. 
That's nice. I don't remember. Oh, there we go. Okay. I was stuck walking for some reason. Damon, this is making sense for you. Yes. That that one made more sense. Groovy. Yeah. I'm like, I'm liking it. We're le we're learning stuff tonight, boys. <laughs> and now Trail's okay. coming in to learn stuff too. So I don't know if I'm gonna. I don't know if I'm gonna repeat everything again. Or not. <laughs> I'm just like I don't know if I should record it all being repeated again. <laughs> No, if it's yeah, if it's too much, don't worry about me. I'll read up on it and uh, figure I it out. I will post the documents now, so this way you can read through it and ask me questions. And the video with him explaining it in like step by step will be uploaded either tonight or tomorrow. I really, 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 really wanted to do just a like one line or one transmission uh, variant, just so that because like if we're doing this well, we're not in a contact and there's not 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 like any sort of immediate stressor. So I want us to get. I, I really like. The format and I really like how it's like super simplified but is there a way to get it down to one line right if I do um, I could do two lines for an emergency situation which that is an advanced topic which I haven't covered yet it is called an immediate suppression fire mission um, basically the way it works is hey shut the fuck up here's a grid dump rounds right now yeah and then the, the way that better. works is there's right. just a readback. So there's just one, two, and three, essentially. Right. But, but I, as the person, just have to say it once. And then um, if there's no correction made, then you can fire. Yeah, essentially. If, if, you, if you would no... say uh, the way it would work is like this. Uh, I'm just going to read it to say it out loud to myself. Sh Striker three, this is Hunter three, immediate suppression. And you, I would just say immediate suppression, which just means... I gotta write this shit down, and then you just go grid one two three four one two three four, and I go read back grid one two three four one two three four, and then I just dump, th and I'll be like, hey, three rounds in effect, and I'll just dump three rounds on the target. You got the, the, the that's the minimum amount because the first part is important because, like, I gotta copy down a grid reference, you know. Yeah, yeah. So the only things that are immediately important are the grid and the amount of rounds you want. You don't even need to say the rounds. I'm just letting you know how many I'm sending. So this way okay. you know to keep your head down if it's right on top of you. Thank okay, you. So, so really, it's just grid and... It's the war... It. It's, it's who you are, the what type of mission... Yeah. And... Where the fuck the target is. Gotcha. That's for, hey, there's a fucking infantry company, like... 200 meters away you would also probably say danger close or yes, even 800 meters close. you know 800 danger meters they're fucking riding six... hell for leather on you yeah. you know 600 meters and sub is danger close yeah yes okay we could probably uh, do that 500 with artillery computers but you know yeah um what i do kind of want to go over um i mean if you have to go to dinner demon uh i mean you well can he's kind of recording so right the only thing I, I mean, I can. if you guys are just going to sit here and talk, I can just sit my person here staring at you and record conversations. Right, no, no, no. Um, I was actually thinking of going over there and clearing up those mines that uh, my boy Phelan here decided to drop. Those should have detonated when I set off that HE round. I saw the sub munitions explode. Yeah, I don't know if all of them are gone, though, so let me go ahead and check this. Um, <clears throat> uh, before I do that, actually, I'm going to go ahead and make this kit public. A lot of bandages. I'm looking at the camera. The it's camera's looking camera. at you. Oh boy. <laughs> Say hi to the camera trail. Uh, Say hi to the future people Say watching training. The eye of Sauron. Nothing happened. Right. I wasn't the, uh, doing anything. <laughs> explosive kit is public. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and check how many munitions are actually unexploded. Hi YouTube. <laughs> More like hi future CML. Oh. I don't know who else is actually gonna watch oh, yeah. this stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. MZ. More like oh. hi CML. <laughs> What the fuck am I grabbing? I think the kit he just made public is what you meant to grab. Wait, where is that? No, is it in the arsenal? Ace arsenal, yeah. Ace arsenal. Uh, I think it should be under import, but... No, not import. I'm listening. It's yeah. loadouts. Um, okay. It's in your loadouts, uh, go to public. You have to use the ace arsenal. Oh yeah, you have to. Um... Interactions? 
You're gonna attach a chem light. Yeah, it's harder to do because it's on a heli. I'm gonna yeet myself there and see what happens. Alright. I hey, can't seem to actually interact with the arsenal because it's in the heli. Yeah. Well, he hasn't blown up yet. I see interactions. Yeah, interaction. And then arsenal is like right above him to the right. No, I, I don't see that at all. Yeah, it's yeah I just. Again. It's broken again. Like the lap dash, that's what I'm screaming. Yeah. Where did Dragon go? He teleported himself onto the apparent minefield I laid. And I, I haven't He's seen any see. explosions yet, except. Dragon, those are anti-tank mines. Yeah, but these should still show up. But, um, I mean, whatever. I'm, I'm gonna come back him. over. Oh, I see him. Wait, oh, yeah. Hold on. Ow. Who wants dinner? It's a rabbit. Was that one of you guys? Yeah, I shot an HU shotgun shell at a rabbit. Yeah. Fuck rabbits. Those Doom Slayer, Doom, 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 <laughs> yeah. Blood. God dang. They're not Dragon Breath, they're just HE. They also have yeah. frag. I was about to say, hey, what, what were those rounds that uh, Soviet used in that one video? Oh, in Doom. Unforgotten Weapons? Those were just machine gun explosive rounds. They didn't take... it's fucking, the uh, Germans also use them. Private that. property. Um, okay, so Trill, what did you want to go over? Did you want to go over Zeus stuff? Did you want to go over medical stuff? Are we all comfortable with medical stuff? Yes, and I also have a tail recap video on it. Yeah, yeah we actually recorded tail going it over again, so. Which is good, because there was new information in there. I, I enjoyed that. Yeah, there was stuff I forgot, so. It was very good recap. If a person is unconscious and not bleeding and they won't wake up, why? Either they're CPR. Heart rate yeah, it's probably their heart rate. So epinephrine and CPR. Also morphine. If their heart rate is too high, they won't wake up. That's true. So you, you have to make sure. First. Yeah, so you have to make sure to actually this stabilize is why it. You take a pulse. Loss of blood when yes. it, uh, also deal with that or no? Yes. Good. Also correct. So Good you have job, to. They have Trey. to have. They have to have enough blood in them for it to actually kick in and all that stuff. Oh, oh hi, Trail. Like... Oh, hey, Joe. Tail, would you like to do your uh, fire mission? I think yeah, Tail... I, think, I think I've got it down. Okay. Yeah. Like, like, right, so you, can, text, you can tell uh, me how pulse, bad I fucked this uh, up, though. Blood. Sure, man. And then... Heart rate? Oh, well, pulse is the heart rate. Never mind. So, <clears throat> from the top to the bottom, the first thing you want to do is tourniquet limbs if you can't get to them. Right? If the person right. is down. Um, and then you patch up the head, the chest, and then the limbs. And then you give them, you know, blood, morphine, epinephrine as needed. There are a couple of tricks, but you really have to be an actual medic in order to do them Striker properly. Striker 6, this is yeah. Hatred 6. Stand uh, sorry, by for fire mission over. Hatred 6, this is Striker 6. We are standing by. So, it's not exactly more options. Grid. Just 2, 4, 8. different? One nine one. Reference: heretical religious institution on the top of a hill. Never mind. I remember my experience. It Five rounds. He. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what? Roger. Is that a fire for effect or just fire? Fire for effect. Roger. Grid so, two four eight one nine or one. one. Priority target Horus. Is that Five rounds in effect. Um, you have a guy who's down and who's really, really bleeding out. What you can do is slap him over. some morphine first. Shot out. Because morphine, what it'll do, it'll slow down the heart rate. And it'll make essentially thicken the blood so that the blood flow is less. Right? That'll oh, essentially okay. make it, him bleed out slower. You give him morphine and then you actually straight up give him blood. 
right? Yeah. And usually you'd want to do this with somebody else tourniqueting the limbs so that the blood loss is slower. Splash. Um, and then once you do that, then you can start patching him up. And as you patch him up, what'll happen is um, the blood will, you know, start getting into him as he's getting patched up. He's going to lose a little bit of blood from the blood loss that he's incurring from bleeding. But because you've already, like, given it to him... Striker 6, do not have visual on splash out. It'll be, uh... Yeah, I'm... Some sort of weird error is happening with my artillery computer. I'm seeing where they're landing, and that is not where I'm aiming the gun. Copy that. But, like, that stuff, you really have to... I have Splash. Test it out, you know? Roughly yeah. 200 meters off target. Uh, towards the west of. Adjust fire east, roughly 250 meters. How copy? Adjust east, 250. Fire... Okay, so Trill. Yep. Have you gotten a chance to use the vectors and, uh, oh, you have my kit? Yes, I was able to get into uh, Ace Interactive. Perfect. Uh, it's broken for Dalen. Ah, uh, that's rough. I'll look at it later. Um, okay, so, Demon, what- Splash. Wait, one, let me just see a splash. What the fuck? Is your charge wrecked? Because it might not have enough charge. No, it's got a shit. It's a. This is a one five five. It's got plenty of charge. Roger. Charge is on board for those. Yeah, they're they're built in. Um, I also did a direct fire, as in I literally pointed the gun where I wanted the round to hit, and it's still fucking hitting somewhere completely different. The artillery computer will take priority over wherever you're direct firing. No, I know, but even when I let the artillery computer stop doing what it's doing, you know, it's still doing that. Brothers, it is the will of chaos. We have angered the machine spirits. We have angered the what? The machine spirits. Machine spirit. oh. Warhammer. Are you guys familiar with using the vector and the micro dagger together? No. Yes. I'm not. I understand what I understand the screen I on the mic. I wasn't gonna cover that yet. Vector. No. Uh, Tail, what about you, bro? Can't hear you from there. You covered it with me one time. I don't remember how to do it though. Pretty okay. Sure um, I'm gonna, gonna put down another paladin for you, Thalen, while you figure it out, and then I'll go ahead and uh, recover the micro dagger and vector stuff with these guys. So You're talking about the church on the hill with the frickin' truck in front of it, right? Yes, that is the target I called to you. Alright, first things first, Demon, do you have a micro dagger? Uh, actually, yes, I think I do. Do you have a Vector 21 Knight? 21B night. I don't think so. Do you have a vector? It's a binot type. No, I have a range rider. Okay, go ahead and grab yourself a vector. I thought you were talking about the. I'm used to a gun vector. Yeah, yeah, I know. This is, uh. This is not gun. Dude, I see the entire damn thing just jump. That's scary. Yeah, these guns do that, man. 
This is interesting. Yes, it is not as magnified, but here's the cool thing. So what you want to do, the default keybind is home. So press home. Yeah. This will bring up your micro dagger. Ooh. <laughs> press it again so that it like covers your entire screen. Oh, good. Right. Now that you've done that, go ahead and press the top uh, where the numbers are for the time. Like, it should be 1406. Click on that. Then you should have four options. I won't cover the other three. What I want you to do is click connect to. And once you've done that, on the first tab at the bottom left, you should have <clears throat> a, a laser uh, designation, a range, and an elevation. Those should all be blank right now, is that right? Yeah. Yes. Good. So now, what you'll do is you bring up your, micro, your ve uh, vector, 21 night. And the way this works, <clears throat> There's two cool functions. In order to get your direction, you will press and hold tab. And while you press and hold tab, you can actually pan around and keep looking at different spots. And it'll actually, in real time, adjust the compass direction for you. Do you guys see that? Yes, it shows the, yeah. OK, good. Now, to do the range, you'll press and hold R. And for this one, you can actually pan, so you have to actually stop and let go of R, and it'll give you an, a range. Do you guys see that? Yeah. You don't see that trail? Should be R. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out the tap part. <laughs> Whoa, what the hell? Why? Let, let me fix you all. Everybody took damage from that. What? Yeah. Was that the... Oh. I'm in the paladin tab, further but, away. Um, uh, my bro dagger is still up. Can't explain screen, it. Correct? Sorry, Trail, what was your question? Uh, where's up, uh, we... Screen when we press no, no, sorry, home. sorry. You want to close it? Yeah, press, press home again. Oh, okay. Close it, and then now you want to just look at the direction and then press and hold tab uh, while you're in your uh, vector to look around and get your degrees. Oh, Does that work okay, for you? Uh, Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so we're all on the same page, right, Tail? Uh, yes. Okay. So now, the cool part about the micro dagger and using the vector at the same time, what I want you guys to do is look towards the church at bearing 71. It's hard to see because we don't have a lot of magnification, but you should see it at the top of the hill. Bearing is 71. Yeah, I see it. I got okay. it on it. Perfect. We'll wait on till. And then... 2,041 meters. Don't that wait. sounds about right. I, I know the, I know the you're talking about. That was the okay. course of my fire mission. Okay. Uh, so, I link it to the Vector 21 again? You press home to bring up the vector, and then you actually click it to the, click the top where the time is, and you'll have four options. Click Got connect it. to. No. God damn it, I went to this. Is... Alright. Yep. Uh, it'll be something like that. So now you'll go to the first uh, tab at the bottom. So you have the range and elevation, and those should be just dashes or blanks or whatever. And then what I want you guys to do is press and hold tab and R at the same time. And then once you have like that circle pop up in the middle, let go. And then come out of your vector 21. Oh. So now you see at the bottom right where your micro dagger is, it actually gives you a full readout of your target. Oh, uh, yeah. Range, elevation. And I'm guessing the X E number is the square, is the grid number? Yes, four, uh, eight digit grid. So the best part about this, guys, is you can actually leave this location. And it will still give you accurate grids. Yeah, because it doesn't target. change at all. Huh. I can try doing that 
all over again, I guess. So pretty much we can uh, calculate the range, elevation, and bearing, and then reposition, and still be able to retain the information. Exactly. exactly. So you're talking about the standard vector 21, not the 21 vector B, right? Uh, it should work with all vector variants except the vector B. Uh, 21 night has night vision capabilities, so it's preferred that you use that if you're going to use a vector. It should, though, all be able to link. Thalen, I think I can give you a more accurate grid for my fire mission. This no, time. what was happening is the the for some reason it the artillery computer was being overridden by something. Hmm. Maybe um, it's not allowed to target churches. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Um, I need to do some looking up on that, but let's cover your actual call for fire. Yeah. You got to break it up because you kind of just said a bunch of stuff all at once, you know? Okay. So the way it's supposed to work is hunters. Yeah. I mean, you got, aside from saying standby for fire mission, you're supposed to say fire for effect or like adjust fire or even just fire mission, you know? I thought I said um, uh, fire for effect at the beginning. So just just uh, to no, you said it at after you described the target. Hmm. Okay. Just just to just well, to I mean, reiterate for, my, for myself. The footage, but I remember that the order was weird, and you didn't give me a chance to say it back. Oh, okay. So that, like, that's my bad. Yeah, you want to you want to make sure that I'm listening first, and then you're like, all right, grid two four eight one nine or one. Priority target heresy or whatever. Priority target, heretical religious institution. Yeah, that's a bit of a mouthful. Um, but it's so br break it down into the three parts again. You have the first part where it's the person and then the type of fire mission, right? Is it either adjust a fire, fire mission, or immediate suppression? Yeah, let, me, let me cover it again. Also, you're talking on your radio again. Fuck. So, the three elements of a call for fire. Uh, first transmission is, excuse me, the three parts or three transmission parts for a standard call for fire. First transmission is warning order, uh, is observer ID and warning order. So let's say observer ID basically says which observer is calling in the mission and the warning order tells everyone else to shut up. They're sending a fire mission down. Um, and then you would, for a well, warning order, you could say fire mission you could say fire for effect, you could say adjust fire, or immediate suppression, depending on whatever mission you're doing. The second part is the target's location. So either a grid reference or a, a direction and distance and elevation. And then the third part is what the fuck the target is. You know, so enemy infantry, priority target, APCs, tanks, um, the third element, uh, the third part can also contain what specifically you want us to do. Like if you want to do a laser designated and stuff like that, those are the three main parts of a call for fire. The, uh, so the, the direction fire. and such, that's for only, that's only for non-grid related ones, right? You don't need the Correct. direction, but it's giving you direct grid. Polar. Yeah, that's yeah polar is the one where you give them an approximate location and then march them around from there. Well, I mean, if you're shit hot at it, you could probably do it on your first try. Yeah, when um, it's not going to be shit hot on it first. Right, because you're going to want to, like, you. we're probably only going to do grid reference for the unit, uh, unless Murdoch wants more of real realism, and in which case we'll have to work on... It's actually updating their location on the map instead of just kind of reading off a grid in vague, hand-wavy motions, you know? Yeah. So this oh. way the fire unit can actually track their position and not hit them. Yeah, so that's another thing that I kind of want people to get better at is actually, like, making sure that we know where we are on the map. But most of the time, like, unless we're doing, like, a roaming motor or, like, a motor team that's attached to us... uh. I, I'm pretty sure it's going to start with a motor team attached to us, just, yeah. just because it's of It's probably just going to be grid reference, or maybe laser designated, if we're feeling fancy. Right, because for that for that defense mission, Thalen, like, literally what I did was I went, freaking got the range, and then I went back into my motor, I literally looked where I wanted to, 
slapped the charge in, slapped the range, and fired, and it was good. Mm -hmm. I didn't even need a grid reference. Like, you don't need a grid reference when you're doing mortars and other things of that nature. However, a counterpoint to that, we were in a defensive position, and you actually had time to mark it out, essentially, on your map. Yes. You had time to prepare. Yes, but... Uh, Just saying. I don't know. I, I feel like it could be done without I mean, it probably could work if you're a shit-hot mortar operator. I'm not gonna lie, because you were doing good work with that. But, you know... Regardless, direction, distance, and elevation is for a polar mission. So... But if we're using micro daggers and Vector 21s, we don't need to do that. You right. can just get a grid. Right. An a grid an is a always better. An grid, which is more a accurate. Yeah. yeah, grid is always better. As I mean, much if anything, you can provide. yeah, you can use a keypad system. I just got to write which, what is our standard keypad system going to be, which I'll do the numpad on your keyboard, keyboard one, just to make it easy, breezy, beautiful girl. Yes. Right, Tail? Absolutely. Thank you, Tail. Maybe it's uh, Maybelline for Tail. Do we have time to do like, an actual mortar practice? Do we want to do that? I kind of want to go eat. The mortar for that. I'm about to have uh, personnel incoming, so right. I'm probably going to bounce out. Thalen, I'll go over my, yeah, my updated later. thing later. So. Yeah. Cheers. We'll talk about it later. Gentlemen, we, we will do this again. Uh, and I Hopefully will see more you people will show up. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah. I might also bounce out because I want to go eat my food. Yeah, go eat dinner, man. Yes, you need to go eat. I'm kind of um, just hanging out to answer questions, but I am probably also gonna leave soon. But 